So the cantilevered beam with the dimensions given is made of A36 steel and is subjected to the loading shown. We're asked to determine the slope and displacement at its end B, out at the end here. So looking at this, the beam is pretty simple. It's just a cantilever. And the loading that we've got is pretty simple as well. We've just got two point loads. So we should be able to go to one of the tables and look up the general equations for deflection and slope for these cases. So we're looking for the case where we have a load on the end and one where we have one at the center. So if we scroll down, I've provided the table or one of them, and we should be able to look up the two cases. So this first entry here corresponds to the point load on the end. So that's one of the ones we're interested in. And in fact, the second one corresponds to a point load in the exact center of the beam. So that's the other one that we're going to be interested in. So we need to calculate the deflection and slope at the end of the beam, which in both cases is going to correspond to um, the maximum values. You can see that they're marked on here. B max and theta max happen at the ends. So the equations that we're interested in are these ones here that we need to copy out for our cases. All right, so I've gone and done that back up here. So I've copied out the case from the table where we have that point loader on the end and I've called it P1. So I'm gonna correct the equations that I copied out um, to have P1 in them as well. This is just to avoid confusion because our second case as well includes a P in it. So we're gonna call this one P2. So now all we need to do is apply superposition which is where we say the combined case up the top is equal to this case plus this case added together. So let's go ahead and first of all, before we actually don't do that step, calculate the I value that's gonna enter up in that equation. So remember that I is a property of your cross section of your beam. So we're told that our cantilevered beam has a height of 250 and a width of 22 millimeters. So it would suggest it looks uh, something like this. So this length, 250, this length is 22. And remember that bending occurs through the centroid of your shape. So if that's going to be the centroid of the rectangle. I can draw my um, axis through that shape. And if I go to a table for the second moment of area values and look at what I is for a rectangular cross section with the axis drawn through the center here, the equation you're going to have is that it's equal to BD cubed on 12, where this is D and this is B. So we can go through and calculate it. So B is 22, D is 250. It's about 2.86 by 10 to the 7 and the units are millimeters to the fourth. So this is what's gonna go in for I in each of these different equations. All right, so let's start with the slope. So we need to add both of these together and it corresponds to the total slope theta B. Oh, I dropped the one. Cool. So now it's just a matter of substituting all our values in. I think I'm going to factorize out L squared and EI so I don't have to sub them in multiple times. So if I take them out the front, I'm going to take the negative as well. Factorizing for this part here, or that term there, you end up with P1 on 2. For this one, it's going to become P2 on 8. Alright, so let's substitute in. So L is the length of the beam, and if we go back up, we can see it's 2 plus 2 meters, so it's 4. E is the Young's modulus for the material, which we're given as 200 GPA. Um, putting it in base units, it's 10 to the 9. I is the second moment of area that we just calculated up here of 2.86 by 10 to the 7. Again, converting it into base units, it's 10 to the negative 3 to go from millimeters to meters. And then since the unit is raised to the power of 4, our conversion is also raised to the power of 4. So we need to put in P1, which is the point load that's applied on the end. So 30 kilonewtons. P2 is going to be the 20. So 30,000 on 2, 20,000 on 8. 
So if you type all this in, you end up with an answer, which comes out to negative 0.0487. And the units of it, since we converted everything back to base units, it's going to be in radians, because that's the base unit for angle. If you want to then convert it into degrees, you need to multiply by 180 over pi, that's the conversion from radians to degrees, and you end up with an answer of negative 2.8 degrees for your angle. So the reason that this has come out negative is because our beam is being bent below the positive x-axis. So since our angle is being measured from the positive x-axis, what it's telling us is that the beam is bending downwards like this at that point. And this is the 2.8 degrees. It's the x-axis. Okay. So that's the first bit done. The next bit is looking for the deflection. And we just need to apply exactly the same method. So we can say that the deflection at point B, which is the maximum, is going to be the, um, these two cases added together. And I'm going to again try and factorize this to make it a little bit easier for the substitution. So I can take out L cubed and EI. So for the first term, it needs to be multiplied by P1 on 3. And for the second one, it's going to be 5P2 on 48. Again, putting things in. We get this. And these ones, remember P1 is 30,000 in Newtons. And P2 is 20. So typing all of that into a calculator, the answer comes out to negative 0.135. Everything's in base units, so the answer comes out in the base unit of meters. If you then want to convert it, you can. Um, say you want to go to millimeters, you need to times by 1,000. So that becomes 0. Point, um, sorry, it becomes 135 in millimeters. Okay, again the answers come out negative, which is just telling you that it's deflected below the axis rather than going above the x-axis. So that's all there is for that question, and see you in another video.